The company is now a billion dollar market cap. Costs are still very low, as you know. Um, Matt just, as Matt mentioned, we outsourced or they externalized the management of contact asset management over the last 12 months. So that's a business owned by myself and Tom Milner, along with Sol Pattinson. We've got a, ten, a five plus five year agreement with BKI to manage this portfolio for 0.1 of a percent. So it's a very low cost offering. Um, that 15 bips is basically locked in for a long period of time. So the other five basis points are director's fees, printing, ASX listing fees, and so on. So it's a, um, we're shareholders in this business, so the, the focus is to keep that cost very low. Uh, Long-term performance remains very solid at over 11% since inception in 2003. We have had a tougher year performance-wise over the last year. Um, but the telcos hurt us. I can touch on that in a bit more detail shortly. And, and also we're underweight resources, um, and the rally there has hurt us a little bit as well. Um, but you know the yield is still very good at almost six and a half percent grossed up we increased the dividend again um, and as Matt said we had a pretty solid result which I'll touch on shortly our franking credit balance is at uh, 27 million we look at it uh, in the way that we have almost a year buffer I guess on on dividends um, which I think is important um, I won't go through the investment process here today I think you're, you're on top of that but in terms of the result itself as I, you know, it was a tougher year. You remember in the first half that a lot of companies did cut their dividends. Um, but having said that, we managed to increase our, our profits. Um, the difference here with the 8% increase is uh, the Telstra buyback. So we, we participated in that, that we consider that to be special dividend income. But so the EPS after, after that special dividend income was up 3%. Uh, and as I said, we, we increased our dividend by 1%, which against some of our traditional peers is, is a pretty good result. In terms of the portfolio positioning, there's probably not a lot of change here. As you can see, the financials are very important to us, the banks in particular. We're probably equal weight banks, really, but 30% of the portfolio is in the banks. It gives us 41% of our income. So that additional yield that we get out of the banks gives us a, um, the ability to then invest into some probably lower yield um, but higher growth stocks. Uh, at the moment, we have cash of 5%. We'll still pay our dividend out of that, but um, we've said this a few times, but cash um, for us, is not going to be something we go 20, 50, you know, 15, 20 percent of cash. We take the view that people come to BKI for a low cost, long term Aussie equities offering. Um, they take their own view of managing the cash position. So we will never go to a hiding cash. Um, we want to stay pretty fully invested and drive that dividend income. As I touched on before, this is our, our, our active exposure, I guess, if you will. So you know, we do have a bit of a, a skew towards the financials and also some of the utilities and infrastructure stocks. We do like that sector, continue to. It's, it's been one we've been adding to for the last two or three years, as is the, the financials away from the banks. So the materials is, is the lowest position. Real estate has always been a bit of an underweight position for BKI also. Um, in terms of the total shareholder returns, as I said, we did have a tougher year. Um, so that the relative to performance over one year is, is lower. Three years about line ball, if not a bit down as well, to be honest. But longer term, those returns are still very good. So I was reading the paper this morning that I think there, there was a Vanguard were promoting the, the ETF market, obviously, but they say that I think 75% of active managers have underperformed over 10 years. So at least we're an exception there. But um, I think in this market, we've had a few questions on how do you see the market at the moment. To be honest, I wouldn't really want to be buying an ETF. I wouldn't want to be buying the whole market at the moment. I, we think the market at that level is is expensive. Um, not really talking my book here, but I do think that um, there is more opportunities um, at a stock specific level rather than just wading in and buying the whole market. Importantly for us, just to cover off on the dividend, we do talk about the dividends a lot, but we have increased the dividend again. Um, for our shareholders, this is really important. We have a lot of self-managed super funds. That growing dividend stream is very important when you look at it this way in terms of if you had put $10,000 into BKI at inception in 2003, that growing dividend stream would be giving you a yield effectively of 18%. Had you put it in the bank, the yield would be 3%, 3.5%. So the, when you're in any phase of accumulation, but potentially in pension phase, that, that kind of growing dividend stream is very important. So that, that were the main points I wanted to make. I might just pause then on the, on the portfolio. Um, over the last year, we have um, our turnover is low, as you know. Um, it was 8% over the last year, but um, Flight Centre was the only stock that we really bought that was new. Uh, we bought in last September. When we look at our investment process, um, and just to use Flight Centre as an example, you know, we see business here that was, had been pretty beaten up on after a couple of profit downgrades. We saw some value in the stock, but we, you know, we, we liked the strategy. They'd already moved into the internet market. They had 50% of their earnings coming from offshore. The management team is very aligned with shareholders. They've got skin in the game. Returns were still very good. 
Now, the outlook was a little bit challenged, but we still saw some sustainability in the dividend over the longer term, um, and, and we bought that well. So it's, it has rallied, as you know. So that, that's been a good story for us. Um, Sydney Airport and Transurban, we bought pre-Christmas when their stocks got beaten up you know, post the US election, and everyone, the focus was not very much on long bond rates. <laughs> Um, and we've added to things like Challenger and Lend-Lease early in the year as well. Um, on the sell side, we sold BHP. Um, seems like a long time ago now. We're talking about the progressive dividend policy, but um, it was about a year ago when they cut the dividend hard. We moved ahead of that, mainly on the concern over what the payout ratio was going to have to be. It was going to have to be about 400% for them to, to maintain the progressive dividend policy. And you know, with this fund so focused on dividends, if we get a cut, to a big company, um, you know, the rest of the portfolio has to push pretty hard. So, um, you know, perfect well, we would have bought that back at sixteen dollars, but but we um, we're still a bit cautious on iron ore prices longer term. And Fairfax was one that we sold in recent weeks. Um, to be fair, we got a little bit lucky there in terms of the timing, but we did we took the view we wanted to have a little bit more. Cash. <coughs> there was a bid on the table. Um, we sold into the into the bid, thinking there was more risk of it going back to ninety five cents a dollar than it was to going to a dollar forty, dollar fifty, and um, we, we got out of our $1.25, which worked out well. Um, so, so that's us. Just, just to avoid any confusion, Telstra here is on both sides. You can see that was the buyback. So we, we participated in the Telstra buyback and, and covered a lot of the stock before the stock traded ex dividend. So here's the portfolio. Uh, as you know, we disclose this every month. We try to be very transparent. But you know, we, we look at BKI as a good yielding company, very low cost. It's solid. You know, we manage this very much for the long term. We've got a very good board. As Matt said, Contact now manages the portfolio, but there's no change to the process in that three of our four board members are on the investment committee. They rubber stamp every decision we make. But as I say, it's long term, solid yield uh, and low cost offering that we're, that's going quite well.